uh, I can't wait to get your um, your your insight on this. But the United Motorsports uh, moment of the week is definitely, in my opinion, uh, the the Jet Lawrence uh, Eli Tomac battle royale. Dude, it was a killer battle, especially that second moto. Just uh, going neck and neck. I thought, uh, you know, the cream rises to the top. I hate that analogy, but uh, yeah, it really, it really was a lot of fun to watch. Although there wasn't a lot of back and forth, it was just you could just tell how intense that battling was. And was it a surprise? And what were your takeaways from these two guys? Well, I think obviously number number one for me is is both coming back from from I think this exact same injury, thumb injury. You know, watching Moto One, Jet was feeling it out. You know, just just you know just taking his time is what I, what I thought, you know, Eli was, was on rails speed intensity. They both was, was, was really, really good. You know, chase yeah. running a distant third. Um, you know, to me, he was the surprise for me. I, I, I read that he, you know, was, was missed the setting. Um, you can't afford to miss the setting, not with these guys up front, not with, not with jet, not with Eli. Um, you know, but, but then going to moto two, I felt like that jet was like, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm good. I'm, I'm, I figured out, you know, the bike's good. My thumb's good. I like the track type thing. And he really started to pour it on. So, um, uh, between those two, they, they both rode phenomenal. Um, Eli, I feel like is, is, is probably the, that was the, probably the best we've seen him in a long time. It's going to be interesting to see, um, in, 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 you know, coming up for Dallas here this coming weekend, um, you know, what he brings to the table, if he can bridge that gap, because what I saw that second moto and that's only his second gate drop, they got to stop the train again. I've known I've, I've said that before on the show. Like if you let jet do jet things, it's going to be hard to beat him. Yeah. hundred percent. I was surprised. Um, I shouldn't say I was surprised, but I was impressed by just kind of what I what, what looked to me as like a game plan or a race plan, if you will, and how he kind of eased into it. You could tell he was a little reserved early mm -hmm. on in Moto One. And then as you got about halfway through, starts to pour it on just exactly what you said, got comfortable, boom, starts moving up the uh moving up the moving up the track, gets himself in the position to where mm -hmm. he got a second. Second is just as good of a as a as a first in that first moto. And then uh, coming out, probably a little bit more comfortable that second uh, that second moto, and just has a an, an epic battle, an epic battle, just two strong legendary uh, against a legendary competitor and Eli Tomac. Which uh, Dylan um, Dylan Adonisio asks, what is the mental process of returning from the injury? from returning from an injury and, and, um, Dylan, I think you saw a great, uh, mental process and, and how things should work. Like if you're going to write a script, this is what you want to do is you want to come out there because you just have to expect there's going to be some cobwebs and work into it just like jet did. And like RV talked about, I think he played it perfectly. You know, don't go out there and override, let the race come to you, you know, get that race intensity back naturally and not force anything. It's, uh, you know, these, these races, Races are long, uh, so you have time to kind of let the bike and everything settle in and things come back to you, muscle memory and things of that nature. I think uh, for for Dylan, to answer your question, I think that uh, Jet Lawrence, um, it, it, from a mental standpoint, played that perfect. Yeah, yeah, and from a like see, like you said, from a planning standpoint, if you can plan anything, that that to me is looks everything went. He executed everything that they put down on paper. First moto, get yourself in a position to win, uh, which was second. Feel it out. Um, it is also a new bike that that Jet has not raced on. Yes, he's rode on it, but there's a lot of things that come up when you're racing that uh, you may never feel or see or have to deal with during the week. So I think that first moto is kind of what we saw. Um, you know, they were, they were, they were, vo they were both very quick on the track. I personally thought the, the jet had everybody covered in the entry of the sand turn. Um, actually coming up right here, jet was able to, to really crush the sand right there. Look at the distance and the gap oh. that he closed in on, on Eli. So I did, I didn't think it was everywhere on the track. I thought Eli was very strong. Most yeah. places on the track, but there was a few key spots where Jet had, and even Eli was pulling the quad most of the time. I talked to a couple people, a um, couple of the team managers, and I was asking about that uh, that rhythm section, and I was pretty uh, pretty vocal about it on the broadcast of how I didn't 
I didn't think that Jet's line was the fastest line. And Stu brought up some good points about, well, maybe the G out factor and the, mm -hmm. and the landings and what that, how that might play a part. And, um, and it, was it affecting Jet's thumb? So uh, it was interesting to see that. But after the race, uh, a couple of the people that I talked to, they were saying how actually that um, the line that Jet was taking, if you got it right, and you were able to downside those those tabletops just right and not clip them that it was almost as fast as what eli was doing going on off and then you know quadding it i, I call it triple but quadding it um yep. so that that was interesting so i kind of got that wrong on the broadcast again but i didn't have that type of information and you know do one little clip could could make this the uh the rhythm lane faster or or slower but uh yep. nevertheless it, it was fun to watch those guys um aaron f was this the official passing of the torch from eli to jet i'll give you the first crack at it uh, i mean look i think we've that i think that that's kind of been in the in the in the workings the last 12 months um you know, especially Eli, Eli coming off with his Achilles and, and then, you know, dealing with another little injury with his thumb. Um, it's not an ideal situation when we know that he's he's probably only racing, you know, what a, a, another year. We know we have him signed up for another year. So that's great. But yep. I, I think it is. I think it is the, the passing of the torch. I'm not saying Eli's not. Look, he got a he got a moto win um, in, in, in race one. Um, but, uh, you know. I do think it's going to be tough to 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 manage a 17 race Supercross series, a, a, an 11 outdoor 11 race outdoor series plus three SMX rounds um, against a guy like Jet. You know, age difference is a big deal. Obviously, mentality is a big, a completely different. They're in completely he different head spaces. Eli's got kids, so I I believe it is the passing of the torch. But that being said, I think Eli currently where he sits right now and what I saw after Moto One and Moto Two has got a phenomenal shot at at at, at uh, bringing this SMX championship down to the wire. Hi folks, Lee Diffie from NBC Sports here. If you truly enjoyed what you just watched, you can get more news, interviews, and highlights by subscribing to the Motorsports on NBC YouTube page. You can get it all, so go for it.